Remember that computer that we uh, upgraded for Nick? New graphics card and stuff, CPU and all? He broke it. We gotta fix it today. Normally I would tell you all about how World of Warships is a multiplayer online game that's absolutely free to play with millions of players that you get to take control of some of the most iconic warships in world history and how the graphics are beautiful and has a completely revamped graphics engine and all sorts of different play styles but I got something more important to tell you about today. New players that sign up using my link in the description below are going to get a pretty awesome starter pack. You'll get 700 doubloons, 1 million credits, 7 days of premium time, the Japanese ship Ishizuchi and the USS Charleston. Now with that pack you'll get off to a pretty good start, but not good enough to take me on. So now that I'm done with this ad, I'm going to go back to playing World of Warships while you go ahead and watch this video. So he took all the parts and he swapped them into this case, which he already had. Remember he had two computers and this is his gaming rig. So he was like, thanks for the stuff, Jay. And he swapped it out into this. Now, whenever he plays Cyberpunk 2077, he keeps getting like random CTDs or crash to desktops. So let's go ahead and let Nick kind of slide in here and sort of scooch in here. And we'll let him show us exactly what's happening. Cause apparently, what was that? Okay, so apparently what's happening here is like, he can recreate it in the same spot over and over and over where it's crashing. We're gonna try and diagnose this today and figure out what's going on. Things that he says he's already done, he's already tried rolling back the driver, which is never really, I think, a good idea, uh, considering the fact that these are day one, or game one ready day one drivers, but he tried that at least. Uh, what else have you done? You tried to make sure there's no overclock or anything on the graphics card, yeah. right? I've taken off Precision, like I've turned off Precision, like uninstalled it, I've uninstalled the NZXT. Okay, so you've, you control, like, you've taken off any of the third party software. Now NZXT's, yeah. well, it just crashed right there starting the game, huh? Most of the bugs that I've encountered in the game anyway, and I'm only about 10, no, maybe like eight hours into the game. I've spent a lot of time just wandering around and I'm not that far in the story, but that's fun about sandbox titles like this. I've had weird glitches of like, I'm holding an air pistol going pew, 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 and there's no gun in my hand kind of thing. Um, he's crashed. Okay, restart your system now. So, um, I've not had any fatal errors like this where the game just refuses to run. Like I've had my car randomly explode. I've had, uh, I've shot, you know, the robot in the, in the hotel like one time with a pistol and had it just go and fall on the ground. <laughs> this I could see being highly irritating. This to me feels like we dealt with with Red Dead Redemption 2 with all the weird crashing to desktop and stuff. It feels more like that based on what I'm seeing on this system. Have you tried like, updating windows or updating drivers or any of that stuff. So these are, these are the simple fixes that you would do first. Like just make sure that you're not pending any windows updates. You'd be surprised what some titles and some drivers require in terms of windows updates. Like for, remember you couldn't even enable ray tracing on Battlefield 5 until you were on, what was it, 1909 I think it was. So he's doing his uh, windows update right now. So it's a, it's a cumulative update. I don't think this is gonna fix this problem. But when you start to deal with a lot of uh, these weird crashes and stuff, this is, uh, are you plugged into the internet? That's usually helpful when you're trying to install updates is to have the internet plugged in. I feel like you're a pretty good representation of the average user out there. Maybe my average viewer who knows enough to be dangerous to their system, but not necessarily enough to fix it on their own. See, what I started to get at is the fact that you wanna go through the easy free fixes first. Are there any driver updates? Are there any Windows updates? Um, for drivers, if you're having weirdness where like, you just took this out of one system and threw it in another case. It still would be helpful to do a complete DDU on the driver, which is display driver uninstaller. Um, that takes place in safe mode. When you do the manual uninstall, like you went into device manager and click uninstall driver. Okay. So that doesn't actually wipe all of the traces of the driver out. It doesn't go into the registry. It doesn't remove any, any cause when the driver gets installed, it gets installed all over the place in your system and it doesn't remove all of those traces. And what happens is when you go to install a new driver, there's a lot of files that'll just be like, oh, those are already there and they're the same, let's just leave them. So if any of that became corrupted or, or weird in some way, they could be lingering. Okay. So we'll let Windows install finish. It's now installing the 20H2 version. So I guess you get to be the guinea pig because neither Phil or I have it. So that was nothing more than a driver update, or not driver update, but a Windows update. I highly doubt that changed anything. So we're a little bit better than we were a second ago. You weren't even able to launch the game, but you were able to launch the game the first time when you showed me the problem. All right, so we've got to go over here, right? Mm -hmm. This is like a assassination type of mission? Yeah. Okay, so it crashed or locked up completely, yeah, before we even got to, to the scene. All right, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna start with DDU. 
This is a free piece of software I feel anyone, everyone should use. Um, it's very difficult to break anything. You do need to go into safe mode to use it properly though. So we're gonna look for DDU. What you want is official display driver uninstaller download. I get the one from Guru 3D, I trust them. There it is, display driver uninstaller. We can go ahead and uninstall it or install it. All right, so there we go. Now it's telling you that you're not in safe mode. For, you know, you should use safe mode, which is what we're going to do. Um, so to go in safe mode, we are going to shift, click on restart, hold down left shift. This is gonna basically bring up kind of a, a boot menu here where it gives you boot options. And that's where we can say that we want to go into safe mode. So keep holding shift there. Now we can go to troubleshoot, advanced options, uh, startup settings and then click restart. So how you been? Good, how are you? And if this keeps up, I'm gonna catch up to you. Oh boy. Where'd Wait. you get that sniper rifle? Oh, yeah. okay, I don't care. <laughs> uh, all right, so now we're gonna go in number four for enable safe mode. We don't need networking for this. Uh, we just wanna make sure we're in safe mode. That just means Windows is literally gonna boot with the minimum amount of DLLs and, and drivers and other controllers activated. That way we can go in here and safely remove drivers without breaking anything because of the fact that it's gonna be running just a basic VGA driver right now. So go to where you downloaded DDU. So here's what we're gonna do now. You're gonna tell it what you're gonna uninstall. We're gonna uninstall a GPU. It's an NVIDIA GPU. And then we're just gonna do clean and restart clean and not restart or clean and shut down. So we're gonna do clean and not restart because I wanna make sure that, I'm just gonna run the uninstaller for anything, AMD, Intel, all of that stuff. I want it all gone. It's not gonna hurt anything, especially since we don't have an AMD GPU in here. I don't believe an AMD GPU was ever in here, but I just wanna be, I just wanna be thorough. So now we wait. It's removing all the stuff. GPU removed from device manager. It tells you what it's doing right down here. Driver store cleanup complete. Starting the removal of NVIDIA Optimus up filter of present. See, these are the kind of things that when you say uninstall in the device manager, it doesn't, it doesn't do. And if any of this stuff becomes corrupt mm. and it just goes, oh, those files are already there, we don't have to install it. It just skips over it. It just skips over it. Even if you click in, uh, clean install, it doesn't do this level of cleaning. All right, would you like to exit now? No. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for AMD. Even though there's nothing AMD on here, I'm just gonna do it anyway. It's probably gonna go really fast because of the fact that there's nothing AMD on here. But it's still gonna search all of those locations. <laughs> See how fast it was because there was nothing AMD? Don't exit now. I'm also gonna do the same thing now for Intel. The reason why I'm doing that is you remember how we showed with this install of Ryzen, how we had a previous Windows uh, Intel install? Yeah. And then I was like, look, it'll automatically set itself up. I don't know if anything's lingering here for any of the old Intel stuff. So I'm making sure now that all of that is cleaned out and won't give us any sort of a problem. So what this means now is when we boot back into our regular mode, okay. there will be absolutely no video driver whatsoever. Windows might automatically install that baked in NVIDIA driver that's like 10 versions old. Mm -hmm. That'll just get things running. Then we can clean install the new uh, one that you downloaded. There. So now that that's done, let's do a simple restart. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to that driver that you downloaded. All right, here we go. First boot with the fresh driver. You said you've already done the, is there like a verify system or game files yeah, option? Yeah, Steam. Oh, same thing. See if it fix everything okay, it now we'll have to start considering things that have potentially changed on this. Um, first of all, I don't like the fact that you're running a single card uh, or PCIe power plug off of Pigtail on a card that will be pulling nearly 300 watts stock. See? That card is guaranteed capable of running 2040. I know that for a fact. I pushed that card to 20, almost 2250. Mm -hmm. So I highly suspect that cable is the problem because it just gave us the same type of crash. And a crash like that that just goes to desktop means if, if the core is not suddenly getting enough power. It just taps out it makes a mathematical error because the core is suddenly not giving the voltage it needs to, to do the task. Mm. And then it just goes, well, something happened and the driver recovers. So what you're seeing here is the same thing that you would see in that game. Only the game tells you the driver crashed because yeah. that's what happened. The driver crashes because the core just goes, I don't know, and the driver goes, stop. So I'm gonna grab that other power plug real quick. All right, so all we're changing now is I took another power plug 
out of my other uh, Cooler Master box. This is a Cooler Master V1 or V1200. It's actually a pretty old power supply, um, but still it's platinum quality, platinum rated. We can worry about the cable later. Just leave the panel side off. I'm gonna start it with heaven now and see if it'll crash. And I bet you it won't. Now the other thing too is I guarantee Cyberpunk's putting a higher load on this graphics card than Heaven is, which is why the problem happens much sooner. But we didn't even make it one through one full loop on Heaven. Heaven is old. It's DX11, not DX12. It just does not, it does not stress the graphics card as hard as I would like. I wish they'd come up with a DX12 version of it that's just much harder to run. Look, it went up to 2040 on its own. Oh, it still has the 100 clock applied. Mm -hmm. but, but look, look, did it crash? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, is something wrong with that card, maybe? So I've actually got three of these. You have a trio? I have a trio of Gaming X trios. The funny thing about this is it actually has a uh, three eight pin power plugs on it. And it'll help fill out its case. Now these actually, I'm not, I don't feel that uncomfortable daisy chaining because it doesn't use all this power. They could have used a, two eight pins without a problem. I thought I was giving Nick a card that's like, hey, look, we broke records with this card. And now it's like, we broke your computer with this card. <laughs> Video memory management internal. When I gave it to you, it worked fine. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the fact that it's played for 27 hours and then the problem just starts after the latest patch, that's what makes it so sus. The patch is sus. I saw it. It vented <laughs> in front of me. <laughs> 4,000 damage to the head. All right, so clearly this card was the issue. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and flash this card back to stock because we do have the custom BIOS on here that we've had uh, in the past. I'm gonna find the right BIOS for it, download it, flash it. I'm not gonna show you guys how to do that. I don't want you to like super break your stuff by doing it incorrectly. And then we'll see whether or not that has uh, any sort of an impact on it. And then we'll figure out whether or not I'm gonna give him a new card or this one back or what. Or maybe one of the other further win threes that we have. Let's now test whether or not that other BIOS was our problem though, allowing it to try and peak the, the clock a little bit higher. And it's possible that this card itself is just not a good overclocker. So let's go back to Cyberpunk and see what happens. Oh, see, there it goes again. Well, I think I'm gonna have to chalk it up to that further win three is, uh, I've done about all I can do with it. The only thing I could really do next is limit its clock and I don't wanna do that. <laughs> well, Nick's been playing for a while now with absolutely no crashes. So it honestly looks like this card, this For the Win 3 card, which is kind of odd because it's not had a lot of playtime, honestly. Um, I thought this was one of the cards that I had put the custom water blocks I made on here when we did the 2080 SLI, like the first series of Rip GN. But the little warranty sticker right there on the back plate that you have to pierce to get one of the screws out is not pierced, which means this was the first card I flashed it on. And I bet you anything, I was like, oh, this isn't a very good overclocker, which is why I didn't use it and used our other two. Um, it tells me that it's just sort of degraded. And it's degraded to the point to where it is uh, just, if it hits like 2000 megahertz, it starts crashing, which is unfortunate. Uh, I don't think it's thermal paste or anything related like that because of the fact that the temperatures were in the 50s and 60s, which is perfectly normal. Sorry about the loud pressure washer outside. We really need to move again. Um, but yeah, it's, this, is, this is the first card though in the eight, over eight years now that I've been doing this channel, that I've had a card be perfectly stable. I mean, you played with this for like a lot, right? When you first, you've only had the computer for a couple weeks now, but yeah. you played it more than we did. Oh. So like literally the only gaming life it spent was with you. With and so the fact that it degraded so quickly is just unfortunate. And I think it's the kind of thing that when I get people sending me emails saying, I don't understand why my card keeps crashing, I've updated the drivers and this and that, um, you could be dealing with the very same thing. So unless you start down clocking or reducing the power limit some to keep the clocks from going as high, it's the kind of thing where your only option would be to RMA it. Given the fact that it's a 20 series card, um, I'm not sure if you'd even be able to replace it very easily. So that's one of those things that you would have to take up between you know, the manufacturer or whatnot. So in this instance, we got Nick back up and running by kind of going with a side grade with our, one of our Gaming X Trio cards. Um, I didn't want to take him to a, like, down to like a Founders Edition card because I mean, when you go with a big beefy quiet cooler like this and then to go to the hair dryer sounding Founders Edition card, um, that just would have been bad. So anyway, no crashes yet, no stutters, it's smooth. You happy? Yeah. What'd you do to this card? 
I didn't do anything good, dude. I just used normal wear and tear. Like, I just played it normal. Normal wear and tear. Destiny and Cyberpunk. Stop tearing the cards. <laughs> oh, and Rocket League. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, anyway. That was the fix. Had to switch the card. We did everything I know of to figure out what was happening with these cards, uh, with this card and the crashing, and the fact that a new graphics card has fixed it. Um, even the second power plug on here didn't make a difference, although don't run a single plug, please, on any card that uses 250 watts or more. Don't do what Nick did, because when I installed it in your system and had both, maybe you degraded it by just not giving it enough power. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.